That's probably true to some extent. Um, but if we just take it one step back, um, the reason why Mr. Rupert stepped into the position of, of CEO was um, that the previous CEO, um, Mr. Norbert Platt, had to step down due to health reasons. So, and, and now with, with this announcement, um, Mr. Fornath is is very good on the operational side. You know, he's been the CEO of Cardia for a number of years. And Mr. Lepur has been the finance director for a number of years. So, so I think you know, it's, it's, it's quite a decent split of, 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 of the business. And of course, he also talks about the financial chief, uh, Gary Sarg, uh, also making up three at the top and talking about their own troika at Richmond. Uh, but that being said, let's get into uh, to the first half numbers. Sales up 12% and first half earnings up 52%. Uh, your thoughts on the earnings that have come through this time around? Because, of course, it's still Europe. Asian spenders spending in Europe and not in their own uh, home territory. Yeah, I mean, the, the numbers were, were probably slightly better than what we expected. Um, not so much really on the sales side, but um, if we look at, at, at the sales, um, you know, the, the growth was 21% in reported currency. So you can see the benefit coming through from a weaker euro, given that your constant currency sales growth was in the order of about 12%. Now, on the issue of Asian sales, um, we noted that, you know, the, the growth from a, in, in the Asian region itself, you know, slowed in constant currency to about 9%. And we guess, you know, obviously for the discrete second quarter, it was probably a bit lower. But Europe has held up extremely well. I um, mean, you know, it was up 19%. Now, that obviously does not tie in with the economic reality of Europe. So, but what Richmond announced this morning in the, conf uh, the presentation was that um, more than 60% of the sales in Europe are to travelers. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the travelers may use of the weaker euro that, that is in place. So, so, obviously, you know, a bit of shift yeah. in sales from Asia to Europe. But there was also concerns around the fact that in October sales up only 7% so in single digits. Um, but they have made note of the fact that Asian sales are going to normalize and you aren't going to see the growth that we have seen in previous years. Uh, what are your views on the outlook for sales in the second half? Well, I think the sales in the second half in terms of rate of growth will be lower than what we have seen in the first half. I mean, you still have a bit of a high base effect coming through. And also, if you look at, I mean, the weakness that they have seen was in the in the wholesale channel, implying, you know, the in, in the watch watch sales to independent retailers. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you could argue that there has been a bit of this, uh, well, that those uh, independent retailers carried too much stock, so they are in the process of slowing their orders, and you can see it in the Swiss watch export numbers of late. You know, they have been quite quite weak. Mm -hmm. So it will probably be another quarter or two of maybe softness before we can see a bit of an acceleration in the growth again. I mean, but either way, they're saying they're going to be paying a dividend uh, in good times and bad. Uh, what do you make of that comment, of course, in light of the fact that here in South Africa alone, uh, Richemont's up 35% this year? I mean, in terms of the dividend, I mean, the, that, there's no real news there, given that um, it is the company's strategy to grow the dividend you know, at a decent pace, regardless of what's happening on the earnings front. So, I mean, if you look at just the interest cover, you know, it's quite low. So they have ample room to, you know, steadily increase their dividend. And also given the fact that they sit with in excess of 3 billion euros of cash on the balance sheet.